Today on Rappler, three junior Supreme Court justices are nominated to the post of Chief Justice. I know the most popular acronym today is the SALN, and uh, chances are next to that would be our income tax return, the ITR. Representative Juna Bias says the post-impeachment era is a time of reform. And Tropical Storm Guchol maintains its strength as it moves closer to eastern Visayas. Hello, I'm Maria Ressa. Welcome to Rappler, your social news network. Three junior Supreme Court justices are nominated to the post of Chief Justice, Lourdes Sereno, Roberto Abad, and Jose Perez. Sereno is the first justice appointed by President Benigno Aquino III to the High Court. She was appointed in 2010. Former Chief Justice Renato Corona criticized Sereno during the impeachment trial, saying her, quote, arrival to the Honorable Court has signaled a new period of difficulty and embarrassment for the former Chief Justice. Sereno disclosed alleged loopholes in Supreme Court deliberations on controversial cases such as the High Tribunal's issuance of a restraining order that stopped impeachment proceedings against then-Ombudsman Mercedes Gutierrez. Justice Roberto Abad was appointed to the Supreme Court in 2009 and is a former dean of the University of Santo Tomas College of Law. The group nominating Abad says, quote, In a nutshell, he is a career member of the judiciary now serving as one of the independent jurists. Abad worked for the Supreme Court all his professional life as a technical assistant, legal assistant, and later as court administrator. Five of the Supreme Court's most senior justices are automatically nominated to the post. A total of 15 outsiders have been nominated. Among them are Commission on Elections official René Sarmiento, University of the East College of Law Dean Amado Valdez, former Energy Secretary Rafael Lutilia, Integrated Bar of the Philippines President Ron Libarios, Court of Appeals Justice Hilarion Aquino, Peace Panel Chairman Marvic Leonen, former Congressman Chedora Teddy Boy Luxin Jr., former Solicitor General Francisco Frank Chavez, the Bureau of Internal Revenue Commissioner Kimenares, Justice Secretary Leila de Lima, Solicitor General Francis Hardeleza, and former Ateneo Law Dean Cesar Villanueva, University of the Philippines Law Professor Katrina Legarda, Rafael Morales, and former UP Law Dean Raul Pangalangan accepted their nominations. House impeachment manager Jose Emilio Junabaya tells Rappler the selection of Corona's replacement is the second chapter of the impeachment. More than healing the judiciary, Abaya says the next chief justice should be a champion of judicial reform. It's a dawning of a, uh, a reform era of, of change. Um, uh, hopefully it's not merely confined to the judiciary, it would branch out to other branches of government and probably even to private sector because I know the most popular acronym today is the SALN and uh, <laughs> chances are next to that would be our income tax returns, the ITRs. Yes. And for sure, all government officials are, will now be very, very careful in filling up those two almost neglected documents before. So that's this one nice thing, unexpected accomplishment that we've, we've done. Abaya, the principal author of the SIN tax bill, says the president's political will pushed the bill forward after it languished a decade in Congress. But this time clearly the president, uh, though he's a smoker, <laughs> is clearly behind us. And I think I, I could attribute that to to the success uh, uh, for the meantime for the bill and likewise the, the advocates amongst the, the congressmen who, who do believe that the, the bill would do good for society. A year away from the 2013 midterm elections, the spotlight turns to the political parties. Opposition alliance UNA has captured early attention while the president's own party has been quiet. Rappler's political reporter Carmela Fonbuena reports. Congratulations, welcome. Vice President Jedumar Bina's United Nationalist Alliance, or UNA, is working double time. What is the Liberal Party of President Aquino doing? People have uh, asked us how come the Liberal Party has remained quiet. We have not talked about our lineup. Yep. Honestly, it was our first time to sit down today. Uh, LP's shortlist remains a secret. But LP Secretary General Joseph Abaya says they included re-electionists to have track record and name recall. 
The 2013 elections is critical. Failing to pack Congress with his allies could turn President Aquino into a lame duck president in the next three years. Remember, marami pang kailangan na isulong na panukalang patas kung saan, uh, syempre, kailangan natin ng boto ng parehong, uh, parehong uh, kamera. Names that President Aquino and LP President Mar Rojas mentioned are trailing behind in surveys. It is only Sani Angara in the Magic 12, Rufi Biazon, Risa Ontiveros, Erin Tanyada, and Joel Villanueva are trailing behind Una candidates Jackie Enrile, J.V. Ejercito, Mig Subiri, and re-electionist Senator Gringo Onasan. But LP says it is not threatened. Uh, the administration's party uh, should, always be, should always be alert. Pero feel threatened? I don't think so. Because uh, uh, most of the leverage are, are all in the hands of the, of, uh, the administration. NP Representative Cynthia Villar enjoys high rankings, partly because of the name recall of her husband, Manny Villar. She has yet to choose a group. The remaining re-electionist senators are also consistent survey leaders. Both LP and UNA are trying to lure them to their sides. Among them, Chis Escudero, Lauren Legarda, Alan Peter Cayetano, and Antonio Trillanes. Uh, mismo mga, mga nakaupo naman eh, they're also uh, jackling for, uh, mga allies naman sila. The re-electionists could change the equation. Carmela Von Buena, Rappler. Congratulations. Former First Gentleman Mike Arroyo denounces the testimony of star witness Nori Unas in the electoral sabotage case against his wife, former President Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Mr. Arroyo tells Rappler that Unas's testimony is fabricated. The former First Gentleman also comments on his wife's condition. It will be given. Uh, I suppose bail will be granted because what that Una said is all hearsay. Mm. It's very sad. Sad because she's such a workaholic and then she's detained. And yet she's still innocent and been proven guilty. And on flimsy grounds, on a guy who's not even credible. Well, that's life. A prominent Jordanian journalist is missing on the southern Philippine island of Holo, a stronghold of Islamist militants who have turned kidnappings into a cottage industry. Police say Bakar Achani of the Dubai-based Al Arabiya Network and his two Filipino crew members failed to return to their hotel on Holo Island on Tuesday. The crew told authorities they were there to shoot a television documentary for Al Arabiya. Achani, 43, is the bureau chief for Southeast Asia of Al Arabiya. He met with Al Qaeda leaders Osama bin Laden and Ayman al Zawahiri near Kandahar, Afghanistan in June 2001, months before 9 11. Telcos will become obsolete. These are the words of PLD Chair Manny Pangilinan in their annual shareholders meeting. The businessman says social media will inevitably merge with telecommunications firms. He envisions his company supplying the power to charge people's phones, the network they use to access the internet and even the news they pull up on their devices. Pangilinan admits not knowing exactly how the two will unite, but says convergence is inevitable. This frontier lies in, in the media space. No? Quite how you will blend uh, a telco utility operations with the creative part of social media is a big challenge. Uh, nobody's been successful yet. A number of, well, a small number of international telcos are attempting to do that now. So it is telcos moving into the social media space, uh, the social networks could get into the telco space because for them to offer and deliver their own services, they need the telcos, right? And for the telcos to be able to enlarge and enhance their services, they need the social media. Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist Jose Antonio Vargas lands on the cover of Time magazine. In Time's June 25 issue, Vargas writes his own story as an undocumented American and immigrant in 21st century America. His title, Not Legal, Not Leaving. He writes, quote, it's an issue that touches people of all ethnicities and backgrounds. In the Time video, he calls immigration the, quote, most fundamentally misunderstood issue in America. Vargas, who says he's from the Philippines, is the founder of DefineAmerica.com, a campaign that seeks to elevate the conversation around immigration. 
He reveals he has been living and working in the United States as an undocumented immigrant in an essay for the New York Times Magazine in June 2011. A fan starts hashtag pray for Dolphy as the comedy king battles complications due to pneumonia. Dolphy is under intensive care, breathing with the aid of a respirator. His son, Eric Kizon, tells the media his father, quote, is responding to treatment very well. Longtime partner Jaja Patilia and daughter Zia express their gratitude to fans' prayers over Twitter. Well, let's now look at Rappler's Rap for today, a list of the 10 most important events around the world you shouldn't miss. At number five, Egypt's Islamist-dominated parliament was declared illegal and illegitimate by the country's highest judicial body, paving the way for a military takeover of power. This sets the stage for a political showdown between the military and the Muslim Brotherhood, a charged backdrop for this weekend's presidential elections. At number eight, Mobile phone giant Nokia plans to cut 10,000 jobs by the end of 2013 after profits fell in the second quarter of this year. Nokia plans to close facilities in Germany and Canada. Nokia CEO Stephen Elop says reductions will ensure Nokia's long-term competitive strength. Earlier this year, Nokia lost the title of world's largest cell manufacturer to Samsung. At number nine, Newly elected Burmese leader Aung San Suu Kyi calls on world business and government leaders to invest in Myanmar. Addressing the International Labour Organization, Suu Kyi talks about the unemployed youth in Myanmar who lost confidence in the future. A day earlier, the ILO lifted a decade-old restriction on Myanmar after new laws committed to end forced labour. And at number 10, U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton and actor Ben Affleck kick off Call to Action for Child Survival. USAID says this year alone, more than 7.5 million children will die before their fifth birthday. Senator Pia Cayetano attended the event and tweeted updates and photos. Affleck opened his Twitter account Thursday. At Ben Affleck's first tweet, Timing feels right to bring awareness to what's happening in the Congo today and to share my stories from this part of the world. For the full top 10, visit Rappler.com's The Rap. Tropical storm Buchoy, international code name Guchol, maintains strength as it moves closer to eastern Visayas. Pagasa raises signal number one over eastern Samar. The Weather Bureau does not expect a tropical storm to directly affect any part of the country within 24 hours. But Pagasa says the rest of the country will have cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms. They may be small, but they think big. The little people of the Philippines have a dream to have their own community suited to their special needs. Carlos Santa Maria reports. Perry Berry is 55 years old, but only three feet and seven inches tall. Although he wanted to play the guitar in a band, his fingers were too small to pluck the strings. He even needs help to hop onto a jeepney or a tricycle. Perry is the president of the Little People Association of the Philippines, where an estimated 300 dwarves struggle to make a living. It's very hard for us as small people to really look for a job because uh, I, we cannot even, you know, uh, carry heavy things. After playing parts for small people in theater and movies, he worked for many years at the Hobbit House, a bar that employs only dwarves in Manila. He refused other jobs that make fun of little people. Now he makes a living selling bags and belts. He is married and a proud father of four children, two of them dwarves like their dad. He tackle to you know to be to graduate already he's so happy you know he said that you know father i got i just i got my diploma already god is really so good because uh the the uh, we have two small children and two big children which is uh, small for me and the big ones is for the mother perry has a dream to create a separate community for the little people of the country so they can all live together in a town adapted to their special needs. What, what, what we are aiming for here is we create and we want this community so that uh, we, we will also be uh, recognized. We're thinking like uh, something like, you know, uh, the design, for example, you know, uh, like a big mushroom, for example, and then What's inside there is uh, made and according to our, our heights, like the table, the chairs, things like that, you know. 
maybe if we have a community of our own, it's easy to be recognized and you know move on on our part. The little people of the Philippines may be small, but their dreams are big, and someday they hope will come true. Carlos Santa Maria, Rappler, Manila. Offers of help are coming in. A benefactor offers Perry's group use of a 6,000 square meter tract of land in Rizal province. The Housing and Urban Development Council has also pledged to loan funds and find a developer for the project. Let's move on to Rappler's Mood Navigator. As you know, every story on Rappler has a mood meter asking you to vote for how you feel. Each vote is aggregated on our Mood Navigator, which chooses the top 10 stories, these stories here in front of you. It also chooses the emotion which gets the most vote. Today, it says most people are happy. So most people clicked on green, happy. Ironically though, if you take a look, the story that got the most number of votes is Buchoy, the story about the storm. 56% of the people who clicked on that story voted that they are sad. Well, that's Rappler's newscast for today, Friday, June 15th, 2012. Visit rappler.com and watch our newscast Monday to Friday. Tell us how you feel on our mood meter. I'm Maria Ressa. As we say at Rappler, Tomorrow begins today.